There are a lot of reasons to want to pursue commercial scale biofuels. Energy security, lowering the cost of liquid transportation fuels, but there's also an environmental benefit. We can grow biofuels that have a much lower greenhouse gas footprint than combusting petroleum. Sears is really trying to address the feedstock side of the biofuels equation to develop high yielding non-food crops that can be grown on marginal or low rent acres that don't compete directly for food production. We're applying modern biology to come up with high yielding switchgrass, miscanthus and sorghum crops that are drought tolerant, have improved nitrogen use efficiency, salt tolerant and are more easily convertible into biofuels. When we think about using dedicated energy crops, we believe the agricultural system will look, frankly, very similar to the way sugarcane works in Brazil. Sugarcane is a high yield density, what's called C4 grass, a very photosynthetically efficient grass that's grown in a short transportation radius from a centralized mill, harvested in a just-in-time fashion. We collect that biomass, we bring it to a central mill where it's processed into ethanol. Our RPE funding has really allowed us to bridge a critical development gap from the early stage laboratory-based gene discovery to proving out this trait in the field. It's really the highest risk step. From where we are today and the progress that we've made, it's a relatively straightforward path to now take these traits, back across them into commercial varieties, and scale them up for commercial production. When we look at these high-yielding, deep-rooted perennial species, things like switchgrass and miscanthus, you can see the above-ground aerial tissue, but there's a lot of root biomass down below. With the right agronomic practices, that root biomass can sequester carbon where the half-life can actually be thousands and thousands of years. So we're actually sweeping the sky out free of CO2. Plants take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. They fix it into sugars through photosynthesis, and so at least some of that is then going down below ground. We became really interested in biofuels when we saw some work that was funded by DOE to advance cellulosic biorefinery. We saw that those DOE-funded advances were going to make it possible to turn biomass into biofuels. So what we really need now is to drive the construction of biomass biorefineries. Then the question would become not how do I grow as much starch as I can per acre, or how much vegetable oil can I grow per acre, but rather how much cellulose can I grow per acre? And when that becomes the question, your choice of crop changes. And then you start growing things like switchgrass, like miscanthus, like sorghum. High biomass producing crops that can be grown on low rent or marginal land. We have the feedstock advances that are being made by companies like Ceres. We see refining technologies being advanced and we still see high global oil prices. So we need to have liquid transportation fuels and biofuels are the best sustainable source of liquid transportation fuels that we have.